Welcome to episode three. Here I have some electric fans off the 2006 six liter Escalade, and we're gonna replace that fan, these electric ones. And we also got these spark plug wire heat thingies to protect them from melting. So we're also gonna put those on. Lots of fun, so let's get at it. These are new, because it says new on the bag. So I'll put them up. Which way do they go? I'm gonna guess the, the oh, hard no. side clips on the spark. On here. Yeah, no, probably there, there, yeah. Let's try on this one. Wow, they don't make this easy. It's like one of those, uh, what do you call those, Chinese finger traps. So we don't know if this is the proper way to do this, but it seems to be working. So I wouldn't recommend doing it quite yet until we know if the engine actually runs when we're done. I don't see how else you'll ever get this over the top though. You, you gotta pull the cable apart. That's the easiest five horsepower per spark plug wire I've ever added. That tire has adequate pressure. So we're gonna remove the fan with our handy dandy adjustable wrench. If I turn it the right way, you make it tighter. Now it's too tight. Should just left it how it was. Make okay. sure you set it on loose, not tighten. So the motor's turning over. See how the motor's turning over? I mean, did back so compression. You don't want that. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> well, the easier it turns over, then yes. Yeah, but it got tight there. So, now that the motor's tight, then, uh, so the crank spins clockwise, and the water pump always turns counterclockwise. And these are threaded so that way they get tighter when you step on the throttle, because otherwise your fan can come flying off if it was the other way. So, therefore, this needs to turn clockwise. So we're gonna hit it with a hammer right here. I don't think it's loose. I don't think so either. Nope. Okay, this isn't coming off. And I don't know why. All right, so we're gonna take this intake off and we're gonna put a six liter intake back on. So, we have it unbolted. I got my fuel line tool. Take these new fuel lines off quick. Push it forward, push the tool in, pull the line off. It's supposed to be as easy as that. Why is it not? Get off. Ta da! Like that. Takes unbolted, out she comes. All right, so we're done here. We're gonna go to the shops. We use a chop saw and the welder, but there's a lot of snow outside, so we'll see how we get there. So I'm gonna take this manifold with this piece on it off, and we're gonna cut into this corner and make it to the other side and tie in there. I'm gonna take the fan off and I snap on air hammer. This fan, no longer needed. Snap on. Yeah, so I have this downpipe looking piece of exhaust that comes from going over the axle on the new trucks. These were warrantied exhausts that GM didn't want back. So if we cut a piece out of the bottom of here and a piece out of here, then the exhaust from the other side can flow into this manifold 
just like that. Now we just need a crossover pipe underneath. So we'll start marking stuff and cutting stuff, and then we'll weld it all together. All right, so I fabricated a crossover pipe with a piece of flex pipe in it. So that way it's easier to put back on and off. And um, we cut the back of this manifold open where it's like an inch and a half around. And we cut a big, basically the whole back corner off. And then we made this 90 degree pipe feed into it, kind of on an angle and it comes down and this is the starter nice far away from the frame and everything. Just gotta secure that, we'll just weld that on there when we're all done. And uh, that's that, that's the crossover pipe. So the hot side for the turbo is done and it now all flex into this pipe right here. So we have some brand new polyurethane cap mounts and you're supposed to put a little bit of grease on them because otherwise they squeak, apparently. This is what I'm told by the parts store. So I'm gonna believe them because it's really easy to put some grease on. So these ones are all greased up nice. I'll just go like that. Mmm, nummy. Perfect. Now we're gonna put the cab on. So what we have here is a hundred foot, a hundred foot roll of heat wrap, which we obviously don't need that much, but we just put the cab back on and forgot to put this on. So now Josh is taking the cab bolts out as you can hear, and we're going to heat wrap the exhaust. So that is that. So now we got the cab back off, so we're gonna take the exhaust back off again. Ready? Because I'm ready. Let's do this. So heat wrap not only holds in all the heat and keeps the heat from going into all of our electrical and stuff, it also covers up all of our beautiful welds and it looks nice. So now we're ready to put the cab back on. Hopefully this is the last time. Cool. So some more parts came in, so we're going to unbox them. So, we got our roll pan, but the bumper's in the way, or the hitch is in the way. So, we're gonna have to put this away for now and take the hitch off someday. Put it on. We'll just hang it there with self taps, like everybody else does.
All right, so we're gonna take all four tires off and then bleed the brakes. These brakes are so soft, it feels like Math 350. Sounds like a ketchup bottle when you're running out of ketchup. So, Mike helped me bleed it. We're gonna put the tire on and stay tuned for the next episode because we're gonna do some serious overfueling. And not only that, I got a big surprise for you guys. Stay tuned.